MTN's Elizabeth Transu has been on scene. She joins us now. So Elizabeth, what can you tell us? On this day, 50 years ago, American astronauts made history. Men setting foot on the moon for the very first time. We're just outside of Sun River because they have Highway 200 closed. They're getting ready for Air Force One to touch down tomorrow night where President Donald Trump is expected to speak at the Minuteman hangar. Think about how rare it is for a president to visit Missoula. Now we've had our fair share of rallies. I mean, Bernie Sanders uh, came to Missoula when he was running for president. Barack Obama came and even Hillary Clinton made an appearance in the Garden City. A family has been displaced after a mobile home fire this afternoon north of Helena. Bullock made this decision in anticipation of more flooding and even possible evacuations. The commodity program typically receives 30,000 pounds of food a month, but since the government shut down, they've had to ask for 13,000 more pounds to fill their freezers and aisles. They've said that they've seen the most people come out for this election than they've ever seen in years past. And that's where we find MTN's Elizabeth Transu. Elizabeth, what can you tell us about this new pub? Yeah, hey, Shannon and Tim, I'm outside the Keller Geist Pub Theater, which is opening their doors for the first time tonight. Hey, good morning, guys. It's like Christmas morning for some parents, I think. Sending their kids back to school, finally. Inmates are giving these dogs a job to give independence to those on the outside. It's that time of the year for giving, and you see those red kettlebells in supermarkets and retail stores across the country. Tonight, I share with you a story of one bell ringer and why she's so passionate about the Salvation Army. Hi, welcome to Walmart, sir. Something we've all got. And I'm not talking about the fame and the fortune. And you never should give up on any of life's goals. It's something you may have to search for. Hope is important. For Mindy. Merry Christmas to you. She found her hope through the Salvation Army. Without Salvation Army's help, I truthfully don't know where I would have been as a child. Her abusive past. I was beaten and blinded pretty much by my father. Put her in an orphanage and the Salvation Army found her. They provided me with the money and the funds for the surgery itself. Changing her life. And not only did they give me vision, but they gave me hope. Yeah, and the whole time I ring it in my head, I sing jingle bells. It's all the way home, jingle bells, jingle bells. But sometimes hope can fade. It was after my eyes started going weak on me about seven months ago that I started remembering. I started hating. I started feeling it all over again. I had to relive it one more time. And I just want to reach out and let people know you relive and relive, but you got to put it aside because there are better days out here. It wasn't easy asking for help. And it's really hard for me to even once stand out here and say, this is Mindy's life because, you know, people don't really know what your life's about. And there's times when you just got to reach out and say, hey, we all need help. We all need encouragement. And she's always there if you need her. I call it my love bucket. Sometimes it's just as simple just to stand and talk to that person. When you see that person in pain on the inside and out, instead of, you know, tearing them down, come on, let's pick us up because we all deserve it. Spreading hope. God bless you and thank you. To people of all ages. Hi, sweetheart. When my children come in, I make sure every child puts money in that bucket. I let each child know exactly what they did. They not only help Salvation Army, help that next person. And that's what, to me, Salvation Army is all about. Salvation Army can help them people because you're helping. Mm -hmm. And without your help, they can't do it. In Great Falls, Elizabeth Trans, who am News. You have a beautiful Merry Thank Christmas you. and God bless you, sweetheart. In an unforgiving place. I've kind of been bounced around from prison to prison. Memories can fade. I've got 106 till I discharge. Time is abundant. I think I see the board in 2047. Oh boy. And for some on the inside, there's a companion. They see you for who you are and love you for it. Life behind bars is often spent thinking. My crime wasn't something that I'm proud of or really don't like to talk about. But, uh... Canine Companions for Independence no. That's a roll. gives the inmates at the Crossroads Correctional Center boy. a glimpse of something they may never have again. Okay. Freedom. Raising George makes me feel that I'm giving something back for something that I've taken. In a year... George, side. The dogs will move on. Good boy, that's a It's not uncommon for us to 
shed a couple tears. To help someone in need. Best thing that from getting a parole <laughs> is probably knowing that they graduated. Shake. Good boy. She mm -hmm. tells us all the time that he's her best friend, and legitimately he is. Katie has cerebral palsy. Stay. He provides a communication bridge for her that we you couldn't create otherwise. Sick. Oh, good boy. To the McGraw family, it doesn't matter where this dog came from. The people who are raising the dogs in that facility, they're giving them 100% of their time and attention. As for Richard and Gary, their freedom will wait. Let's go. But Katie's freedom. You are my best friend. Is just beginning. It doesn't matter to me who's raising them. Someone who's willing to do that for another human being. In Shelby. George, kennel. I say thank you. Elizabeth Transu, MTN News. And these are some of the really early Big Buds. Big Bud in our community is, everybody knows Big Bud. Big Bud represents the biggest, the coolest, the baddest tractors ever made. Yeah. A business that's been in the family for decades. So my dad's office was right here in the corner. I would tout that to my friends. You know, do you know my dad built the largest tractor in the world, you know? 911, what is your emergency? But during a time of giving, the Harmon family lost everything. Hi, I'm calling about uh, the big tractor place out on 87. Okay. You can see smoke coming out of, from underneath the roof. It's on fire. Oh, it's on fire, bad. Cover police. Hi, I am coming down 87 at Big Equipment and the buildings are on fire. I was just in shock. I mean... Such a sprawling facility to be reduced to um, nothing, um, just gone. Decades of hard work burned to the ground. It I literally, I, tears came to my eyes and I just kind of sat there and didn't know what our future was at that point, didn't know what, what the plan was. Um, but yeah, it was, it was, my heart sunk just literally sunk. So we, we do have a lot of support. Uh, but the Harmons are making a comeback, and in front of all his employees, Ron Harmon made a promise. But, you know, you are loved, you are appreciated. Uh, we're gonna support you 110% in every way we can. I think we can have something better than we had. I really, really believe yeah. that. It was super empowering. I felt so proud to be his son. I felt so proud that he cared so much for uh, not just our customers, but our employees as well. And yeah, it was one of, one of my more proud moments in my life, watching my dad. One thing about it, one thing that constantly does happen is change. And uh, some, some days it's not seen as, as positive change, and other days it, it is but uh, we like to think that we think positively. Their comeback, they say, is going to be bigger and better than ever. It's allowed us to take a hard look at what we really need for a facility and make it a more modern, more efficient facility. And of course, we would have not had that opportunity otherwise. I think there's a lot of very good positives uh, that have come out of this. That, I have to say, we probably couldn't see uh, right after the fire, but it certainly turned out to be a very positive thing. Big Equipment plans to break ground soon. Ron and Tim say they hope to be up and running within a year. You can't replace everything you lost, but what you can is survive and be able to move forward, which uh, we certainly are trying to do. Being in, in Haver um, is and having this happen, it really showed me what, what this community is all about. In Haver, Elizabeth Transu, MTN News. It is worth it to be here. It's beautiful out here. And like I said, everybody helps everybody, seriously, you guys. And just like in years past, help was on its way. It started coming up our street. You could literally watch it inch by inch crawl just up the street. Take over the town. Within the last 24 hours, the water rose, forcing residents to call for search and rescue. It's time to get out. There's no way that we could use any of the facilities in the house. And um, 
I don't know, it started to get a little scary. It did. Why? Because I've never been in a flood like that before. We'd already had go bags packed and everything pretty much ready just in case, but we were really not thinking it was going to happen. <laughs> but the main priority... Kind of sad because I don't want anything to be destroyed, but it's only material things that can be replaced. Yeah, that's all that counts. I mean, we got the kids and the animals out. This is the worst I've ever seen, and I hope I never see it again. In Sun River, Elizabeth Transu, MTN News.